Hi, I'm Rowan Harris, and welcome to my increasingly unimportant introductions to our series of Let's Plays for Towncraft. In case you don't know, in this series, Towncraft's lead designer will take you through different stages of the game on various different maps. So without further ado, here is part two of my inter wait wrong show. Here is Lee, the man who needs an introduction, apparently. Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play for Towncraft. I am Lee Harris, Towncraft's main designer. And this is a town I've been working on in the first challenge map called Swamp Thing. I made this map so it was kind of a whole bunch of little islands and things like that. Uh, I actually just made it because Rowan, the, uh, the guy who came up with the whole concept for Towncraft and lead programmer and also brother of mine, figured out that if we just added a mechanic for dragging and dropping wooden planks, we could get these cool little bridges happening. It turned out to be a really easy thing to implement, and it made a lot of sense gameplay-wise, because it allowed you to customize the terrain to some extent. So, we added it. So this has allowed me here to bridge over this gap to where I've placed a quarry. Quarries have to be placed on sand, and they allow you to get an unlimited amount of it by just wandering up and using it when you've got buckets. I've really lucked out over here. I've got gold, silver, iron, coal all right next to each other, so I managed to get all of that in just two mines. And as you can see, I've used the bridges to make sure there's little walkways around the outside of my farms as well. This is just so that my farmer here can easily run around and do what she needs to. So what I wanted to do with this Let's Play was walk you through the way to get uh, a higher town rating. A fair few people have come in with questions about it, and I wanted to let you know sort of how the mechanic works a little bit, show you some of the tricks, or not, not really tricks, but uh, some of the things that I tend to do in order to reach the highest levels. So, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just selling off some things I've been making out of gold and silver to keep me well, uh, well full of money. I'm going to buy a bed. In this particular mission, there's no cotton. Well, not mission, map. In this map, there's no cotton, meaning that all the things like fine fabric and beds and things like that and twine, you have to buy manually. There's just no way around it. So what I've done here is I've stocked up down the bottom, as you can see, on silver rings, gold rings, silver bracelets, and iron knives. The reason for that is if I come across a merchant that happens to be selling gems, I'll buy as many of those gems as I can because any of those items, the bracelets, the rings, you can just add a gem to them. Nope, no gems, bugger. You can just add a gem to them and they become instantly much more valuable, way more than it was, way more profit than it would have taken you just to buy the gem in the first place. So, I do actually need to sell them off though because I don't have enough money to even buy gems if they did come up, so that's a bit of poor navigating on my part. One of the items that you'll see kicking around just up here is this flagpole. Flagpoles, uh, they have a very, very high town rating addition bonus. Like, we don't give you exact numbers in the game and tell you precisely how much town rating you've got or anything because, well, we didn't really want people to be going for high scores and that sort of thing in the game. We wanted it to be a sort of experience where you were just, yeah, you were playing and having fun, but... Yeah, since a lot of people do seem to really like trying to climb up to the very top, I figure I can uh, oh. I figure I can show you a couple of things. First of all, I've got a few buildings here. Buildings are necessary for going up town ratings. There are certain rating thresholds that you can't cross with a sim with only a single building or something. You need to make sure that you have something in a building for it to count as a building, and that way we avoid people just spamming out log cabins to get their town rating. Essentially, we want to discourage people from just putting heaps of one particular thing. Over here, I've got my tavern. So the bar itself, the tavern, uh, the little chairs and stools and things that I've got out here, each one of them adds to the town rating. But there's also an upper cap. So, for instance, for those four chairs, I would probably be getting a bonus to my town rating from each of them. However, I'm not that likely to get a bonus if I've got, like, ten. You know, maybe from six or eight or something like that, it just stops counting them. So here we've got a building with nothing in it. Let's suppose we chuck a bed in it. Beds give you a fairly decent town rating. And that person has moved in. 
so I can do something similar again. Let's place another one of these here. Building beds for people is a really useful thing to do. It uh, stalls your town rating somewhat when you've got shacks around. They were designed to be... I actually think they look kind of appealing in an odd and cute sort of way, but they are you know, still designed to look appropriately shoddy. They do reduce your town value somewhat. So if you provide adequate housing for all your workers, then your town rating will stay nice and high. Because apparently I am some kind of fearsome communist at the end of the day. Come back. 20 cooked fish. No. I'm not going to take that because even though that would not be that difficult a task, it would be monumentally boring for you viewers at home, so I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do, however, is show you how to make one of these flags, because they really do increase your town value by a fair bit. Okay, well I already had some dye cooking, but chuck some berries and some water into an iron stove to cook dyes. Now again, in this map there's no cotton, so you would have to have bought your fabric from a passerby. Find fabric, mixed with dye, do them in batches of eight, Got some more dye waiting for me when I'm ready. Oh, don't have enough, okay. So that will give me the dye as uh, a fine fabric that I need. However, these things uh, need, a, need the pole as well, so uh, let's just go take a look and see what we've got in the iron department. Seven iron long poles, that should do the trick, but just in case. I will quickly make a couple more long poles. Ooh, I'm out of coal. Not anymore. Okay, grab some more iron long poles like so. Grab the dyed fabric from the barrels. I'm sure it's not really healthy to be putting dyes in barrels and then immediately brewing ale in them afterwards, but short of putting in a hand washing, well, a washing mini game, I didn't really think there'd be a whole lot of fun in doing that. So twine, dyed fabric, iron long pole, and there it is. So let's put this one up here. One other thing that you can throw down a fair few of, and uh, I think you should be able to put like eight or ten or twelve of them before they start to before they start to not give you any additional town rating, is light sources. You can see down here I've got a couple of iron torch poles, which is all well and good, but let's make something a little better. I remember this was my favorite map after I built it, just because I loved the idea of having to really work around where the water was and not be able to put farms everywhere. It was the first time I actually realized you could do something like that with the game. Up until then, when I was working on the more story-driven first three maps of the game, I was mostly doing forests with a few lakes and things like that. It didn't occur to me that having water, I just needed to change a few bits and pieces of the way the maps were done, and I could do something like this sprawling swamp network. Anyway, I quite like it. Right, and I've forgotten what I was doing. That's the nature of segways, I suppose. Yes, I got sand. Sand, which I will turn into a bunch of glass. And let's see, how am I doing for wax? Plenty of wax. So the iron candle and the glass panes, and the iron short poles. I need a couple more iron short poles, one second. Iron short poles, glass pane, candle. Lanterns! Four of them. Now I could use those to build mines. Mines increase your town rating a fair bit, but iron lamp posts are the best possible form of light source in the game, as evidenced by how much light they provide, but 
also just in terms of town rating. So I'll throw a few of these around, let's see if we can't get this thing up to village. Nice. I'm quite happy with this town, but it's not making a great deal of money, which is kind of my fault, I guess. I should work on that. I'll build a shop or something. People like shops, don't they? There it is, town rating set to village. Chuck another one there. And one more up here for fun. Okay. Now, next up is windows. Windows are... Uh, in, in the same way that having, having the stone structures like this one here is better than having these little wooden ones, which is better than having these log cabins. Which reminds me, how am I doing for stone? I'll just turn it all into smaller stone. And let's build a couple more houses out of stone. That will undoubtedly increase things. So, what have I done? Iron short poles probably actually make the glass first. That does tend to be a thing, doesn't it? Iron short poles, glass panes, make a couple of windows. And the windows are just drag and drop. That's always good. And where's another spot where I can put something here? You will be... You'll be my shop. Build. Chuck a door there. I'm going to need to build a bridge out to that. But such is the challenge of the legendary swamp map thing. So we'll need scales for this. Scales, for those of you who have not figured it out yet are made with the cunning application of twine, short iron poles, and iron plates. Now you only need one of them. Then you use tool bits and planks to make a counter. Counter with scales to make a sales counter. It's a similar thing for making a bar, by the way. Get a counter out of planks and tool bits, and then get a whole bunch of glass mugs, which you can just make here in the furnace out of sand. So, I've got the sales counter. Now remember, even though I've built this little stone building here, it doesn't actually count towards my town rating yet because it's still empty. Just to avoid people putting a whole bunch of empty houses to try and win. Because you're all sneaky like that and I don't trust you. I'm kidding, you're not that bad. Or maybe you are. I'll get back to you. So, I'm low on planks. Go build a bridge out to this little bad boy. And what have I got? I can build ooh, another one each of the two different types of buildings. So I might do that really quickly and see. It could be, you know, it could be possible to bring this one over the line and actually have it hit township while I'm recording, but I doubt it, sincerely. Let me just try and get some money. Money always helps, because with money I can buy breads. Breads. But I, of course, meant beds. Dang. Oh, well, I have a bed. That's not a bad start. Also, I like community. Let's just bridge our way across here. Ah. I can see that I have managed to get rid of some of my wood to the extent that I'm not going to be able to build that other house. No matter. Wood's quite easy to come across. I'd recommend, by the way, as soon as you get the opportunity, it makes your life just so much easier to have an iron hatchet. You get so much more wood from the trees. And over here was my first town settlement. I actually built here I don't know why, I just thought, oh look, there's some good farmland, so I thought I'd start my town here. And then I got here and realized there was nothing anywhere nearby. And then I saw all these mines and stuff up here and thought, well, that clearly is where it has to be. So I went and decided to start a whole settlement again. Okay. 
Remind me why I was here, people. Logs into planks. Planks into a plank house. It's not really called a plank house. Make a door. Plank house. And I'll just put something in there. I don't I don't even care what. Just so it counts as another building. This can be my stone oven building. Ta-da! Alright, so I'm going to leave it at that. It doesn't look like I've managed to make it all the way to the top rating, but uh, then again, in order to do that, you really do need to have a whole bunch of absolutely everything. So I guess those are a few points on how the town rating system works, and a gold star is awarded for making it to township on any of the challenge maps, uh, except for the River Wild, which I believe you, you complete that one simply by doing the story missions. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Towncraft. Keep, please do keep the feedback coming in. I, I read absolutely all of it, and we are still updating the game all the time. And the more you guys tell us about what's going on with the game, what you like, what you don't like, the more we can change. Have fun, everybody. Bye.